Hello and marhaba, I'm Hania and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be talking about caring for and using the North African conical pop called a tajin. A tajin is a unique type of ceramic or clay cookware. The bottom is wide, circular, shallow dish is used for both cooking and serving, while the top of the tajin is distinctively shaped into a conical dome. In a previous video I shared, we went shopping and we bought ourselves a new tajin. But before we begin, if you find this video helpful, please give it a like and also share with a friend. All the information that you'll need and all the equipment that you'll need is listed up on the screen as well as in the description box below. The word tajin also refers to the succulent dish which is slow cooked inside the pot. Typically a tajin is a rich stew of meat, chicken, fish, seafood, or even just fruits and vegetables. An authentic clay or an unglazed North African tajins are wonderful pieces of handmade cookware that can be used to create North African dishes. Unglazed tajins in particular impart a unique nuance to tender slow cooked stews. The method that we're going to use today can be used for any clay earthen pots such as a couscous suri or even soup pots or even flat tajins that are used for baking bread. So I'm going to begin by filling up my sink fully with cold water. As you can see here, the sticker says that my tajin is 100% made from natural materials. No lead-based paint was used, and it's safe for the stovetop, oven, microwave, or even induction stoves. You want to be sure that all the surfaces of your tajin are covered by the cold water. So you want to place the cold tajin into cold water you may need to do the process in a large bucket or even if you're in your bathtub if your sink isn't big enough. Allow the tajin to soak overnight. The next day, remove the tajin and allow it to completely air dry before handling. It's really important that your tajin is completely dry. In the next part of our video, we're going to be completely coating our tajin with extra virgin olive oil. You can do this with a tissue paper as we're doing here or also with a pastry brush. Just be sure to completely get all of the surfaces, every crack and crevice and hole, completely covered with the olive oil. The olive oil will act as an extra protectant and also season your thajin so it'll impart a really delicious flavor also into your thajins. Decorative thajins do not actually have to go through this process as you will not be cooking in them. Only the unglazed tajins, which are used specifically for cooking, need to be seasoned and treated as we're doing in this tutorial video today. But in regards to the decorative tajins, I would suggest before you purchase a tajin to make sure that the decorative paint that is used to decorate it actually isn't a lead-based paint that could actually harm your health. So I really recommend making sure that you know all the information with the materials used to make your tajin before purchasing. Authentic tajins will crack if subjected to high heat, and unless otherwise directed, always use your tajin on a low burning setting. If you're using it in the oven or on the stovetop or directly on top of a fire. If you're using it in the oven, I wouldn't set the temperature higher than 325 degrees Fahrenheit or 160 degrees Celsius. So you can also do the same process as you're seeing we're doing here with our couscous yay, as well as the flat tajin. So now we're going to be baking our tajin in a cold oven for about two hours. So as you can see, our tajin didn't fit, so obviously we're going to put it in two stages. You can set the timer for two hours and put your tajin for 300 degrees Fahrenheit or 150 degrees Celsius. After two hours, turn off the oven and leave the tajin in the oven to completely cool before removing. Now wash your tajin with cold water, allow it to completely dry, apply another layer of olive oil, and then you can start cooking with your tajin. When cooking with the tajin on the stovetop, the use of a diffuser between the tajin and the heat source is essential. A, any type of diffuser can be used, such as a cast iron skillet as I'm using here, or even special made metal pellets that sit between the burner and the tajin. As the name says, it diffuses the heat so the ceramic doesn't. Also, another tip for you that I have, if your tajin doesn't have a little hole for all the extra liquid to evaporate, 
Here's a tip that I learned for, from one of you out there in our Facebook groups. You can just use some spoons, such as I'm using these older wooden spoons, to let all the extra moisture evaporate. So this will help you in the cooking process so that you don't have a big mess on your stove, inshallah. Earthen cookware, such as the unglazed tajin pot, have an incredible capacity to simmer the food allowing all the natural, genuine flavors of ingredients to be tastefully released. As the French say, goût de terroir, which means taste of the earth. The conical-shaped lid helps preserve the moisture of the food. The steam condenses inside of the lid and drips back onto the food and is, in, in fact, self-basting. The shape also creates circulation of flavors and spices within the food, making your dish extra tasty. The lid needs to fit the base correctly to form this complete seal. So with the, the method that I showed you above, you have to really be careful so that your, um, your food doesn't dry out. This method of cooking is excellent for less expensive cuts of meat, which require long, slow cooking time. Cooking in a tajin is easier than one might think. Just layer the ingredients in the base and add your stock or water over them. Cover with the lid and cook for about 1-2 to two hours. Some recipes may call for browning the meat in a separate pot or cooking it completely in another pot. But this is really not necessary when cooking in a tajin. This is actually not how our ancestors did it. Of course, you may want to do this to save yourself time. You just Simply, you just need to add the vegetables and the meat into the vessel at the beginning. Layering, of course, the items that take longer to cook on the bottom and the items that take shorter time on the top. This is very different from conventional pot cooking where vegetables are added only after the meat is already tender. It's very important to not add cold foods or liquids to a hot tajin and take care not to put a hot tajin on a cold surface. Always place your hot tajin on a trivet when serving. Similarly, don't add hot liquids to a cold tajin or place a cold tajin in a preheated oven. If you're using your tajin in the oven, make sure your tajin safely fits inside the oven. Remove the top shelving if needed. Layer all your ingredients into the base of the tajin. Pour your stock or water over the ingredients and cover. Place the cold tajin in a cold oven and turn on the temperature to 160 degrees Celsius. And position the tajin furthest possible shelf from the heat source. So if your oven heats from the top and the bottom, place it in the middle. Inshallah. It's also very important to remember to coat the bottom of the tajin with oil very well. Traditionally, smen, a preserved butter or olive oil is used, but vegetable oil works just as well. Just be sure to use a good amount of oil so that your food doesn't end up burning on the bottom of your tajin. Many cooks re recommend marinating meat, especially to tougher cuts of meat, in what is called the sharmula. This step isn't necessary, but I do highly recommend it. In the next part of this video, I'm going to show you how to clean the tajin. As I mentioned before, you do want to cook your tajin on a slow heat, but as you can see, I purposely burnt it inside because this does happen, and I want to show you how to safely clean your tajin so that you don't damage it. So, inshallah, we're going to begin by just looking around at our tajin to see what needs to actually be cleaned. So usually the conical pot, the lid, as you can see here, doesn't really need that much work. So I'm just going to clean it with some uh, light, mild soap, possibly even vinegar to disinfect it. Never use any kind of abrasives or bleach. So the burnt part, such as the bottom, as you can see here, I just like to soak it in some mild soap and some vinegar. And usually that gets up most of this burnt parts or any kind of debris. But if you do find that you have some extra spots that just are really tough, I suggest letting your tajin cool that it's completely cold and then adding cold water and letting it heat up on your stove, of course on your diffuser, and adding just a little bit of baking soda so that it can work up all of that debris and burnt stuff that's on your tajin. So just after a few minutes, you can see that it's starting to bubble up and it will actually remove pretty much everything that would be in your tajin. So I'm just going to dump the water out as you can see here and you see it completely came up. It was just that easy. There was no need to use any kind of abrasives. So after cleaning your tajin, you want to air dry it completely before using it. 
So I would suggest after cleaning it, just lightly brush it with some extra virgin olive oil and let it dry completely. When storing your tagine, I would suggest leaving the lid a little bit ajar because it does tend to collect some kind of uh, bacteria and mold in it. So you actually do not want to do that, especially if you live in a humid area. Such some darkening or staining should be expected with the use of a tagine. This is actually, ironically, a desirable characteristic. But if the darkening does seem to bother you, I'm going to link a quick tip that Azra over at Moroccan Kitchen shared for you to try out, inshallah. So if you are using your tagine for a while and you see that it's blackening, as you can see that it's black in here on my flat bread tagine, this is what naturally happens. And I would just suggest going through the process of re-seasoning your tagine. So inshallah, I hope you enjoyed this video, you found it helpful, and if you did, don't forget to give it a like and share with a friend and show and let me know what you thought of in the comments. Until next time, peace be upon you, and I hope to see you in the next video, inshallah.